Virgil Ortiz revives the tradition of social commentary in Cochiti Pueblo Pottery. You knew at a young age you were interested in this. What inspired you to work in clay? Growing up in a family of potters, like on our mom's side, separating Ortiz, um, her mom, Lawrence de Herrera, they were all potters. My siblings and I kind of grew up in the world of clay, um, clay always surrounding us on a daily basis. So talk about when you were young and you started making figurines. Did you know that you were tapping into a long tradition? I didn't just because it was always around us. And I learned from my mom the subjects and the different painting styles on those traditional pieces. The Coach de Pueblo people, they're the originators of the storyteller figure, which is a mother or, or um, animals that are carrying their kids. But then I started- And they're seated. And seated, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I started making pieces that were standing and I started paying attention to more how they're dressed and that kind of led to like the, me thinking about the fashion side of things. When I was about 15, uh, a collector from Albuquerque, his name is Robert Gallegos, would always come and uh, look at my mother's pieces and check to see what she was working on periodically. So he kept tabs on my uh, brother and my sisters, what we're doing. But when he seen that my work was changing, um, he was asking my parents where is he getting these design ideas from or the subject matter and they said we don't know what he's doing but <laughs> and I didn't either but um, he had invited us down to his office and to his show, um, showroom here in Albuquerque and it turned out that he had the largest pieces of the historic Pu uh, Coach D Pueblo pieces from the late 1800s and we walked in and all of our mouths dropped open because all those pieces looked like those pieces. So pieces that, that I was creating. Uh, wow. Yeah. So um, at that point, both my parents pulled me outside and they said, like, now you see with your own eyes, like the clay has chosen you. So at a young age, like around 15 or 16, I knew exactly what I was going to dedicate my life to. Most people don't know the whole uh, backstory of the historic pieces, and they were all based on social commentary because all of at that time when the railroads were being laid around this area, um, there the people were being exposed to a lot more outsiders, such as or like shows like operas or the traveling circus sideshows that were coming around the area. So, when the public people went to these shows, they really looked at all the characters and and, and in turn went back home and created like um, caricatures of them in clay. So you would see really cool um, pieces from the 1800s. How are you sort of taking that tradition and carrying it forward and making social commentary now? Another part of what I dedicate my life was to is to really tell the story about the Pueblo Revolt of 1680 and everything that happened to our people here in New Mexico. It's not taught in our schools, it's not in our history books. Um, it's been swept under the carpet because of the genocide that happened when the first non-natives arrived here. But in fact, it's the first American Revolution and what Kojiti people and their pottery do is all storytelling. So I've written a movie script about the Pueblo Revolt um, 17 years ago, and I base it when it happens in 1680 and also in the future 2180. The whole story re revolves around a character called Ta'u, and that's what the grandmothers and the granddaughters t um, address each other in the Pueblo. I wanted the the central figure to be a powerful woman figure. She's the leader of the blind archers. And it's just a way of paying homage to all the um, Pueblo women, uh, how much um, work they do in the Pueblo. And a lot of the times they're not thanked, but they are really the backbone of our Pueblos. Are there specific um, Cochiti motifs and designs that you incorporate in your pieces? Yeah, I use the, our family designs, but some of them are sacred, some of them are 
uh, geometrical design. So the geometrical ones I take and I kind of tweak them. So I don't use the real traditional ones, but they're, they tell the same story. Because like you could get in trouble use doing the real sacred designs. Those designs are for sacred pieces are stay at home. So you do you worry about a cultural appropriation? People taking yeah. sacred designs and putting them out. That often happens, and like you know, I just really want to let people know that if they are sacred family designs, keep them sacred and keep them at home where they belong. But you you always can add your interpretation to it, and that you can put on the internet because once you put something onto the web, you know, it's like a free for all and you most likely you will get ripped off. What do you see as an artist as your job? Everything that I do tells the story of where the Coach de Pueblo people came from in their, in their ceramics from the 1800s. I'm only a piece of the timeline trying to carry on that tradition. And the real geniuses or the creators are the people that did the social commentary back in the day and I'm only reviving it. But, um, you know, it looks a lot newer nowadays because it, was, it died out, that style. So I'm just really pushing it to, you know, tell the next generation this is, look at these pieces from the 1800s, you'll learn a lot from them. And, you know, hopefully encourage them to, once they start building real contemporary looks, to encourage them to get into the, um, into the, into the art world. Why is that important to you going forward? That's how we were raised. I mean, it's just instilled. We have a, a small Pueblo in Cochiti, and you know, we're all like family. So we all have to take care of each other, and that's my way to um, contribute to the Pueblo, is through the art world and education about the art world and you know, all the kids and show them, give them a backbone to go out there and do what it is that they want to do. Um, if I can open doors and knock them down, basically pave roads, then I'm willing to do that for them. The traditionally made pottery from Cochiti, it's very important and it's as important as our language. And I'm still learning my language too on a daily basis. Like there's so much to learn out there and especially the stories behind them, like gathering the family together to go dig clay, go dig the temper, go make the, the, um, the paints that we use. There's so much involved to, of, of keeping the community together and your families together. So I really want to show that, that you can do it as an artist and you can educate people through it and use it as an educating tool. So it's all part of keeping tradition and culture alive so more isn't lost. Yeah, there's a lot of things being lost on a daily basis. And it's like, you know, if I can, if I was born into a family of potters and that came naturally to me. So I really uh, want to stick with that and use that medium to make it strong and pass it on and really make sure it, it lives on for us forever.